if you have tried to make sourdough bread and it either came out dense or you kind of didn't think you knew what you were doing or you found it too complicated and you've looked at some recipes and you were just overwhelmed by all the steps and I really made this video for you. It is really easy to make a nice loaf of sourdough bread and it doesn't have to be complicated. Now, if you're more experienced and you'd like to play a little bit more with things like retarding your dough and autolyze and all of these things to influence the crumb and the crust and the shape of your sourdough loaf, you can always do that later. But I feel like if you have just a few basics down and you feel successful and you're enjoying the bread baking process, you're going to stick with it and then eventually you can branch out. I actually started this whole process last night when I ground about 100 grams of rye berries and 100 grams of spelt berries. And I always like to include some amount of whole grain flour in my, even my country loaf or my artisan loaf or whatever you want to call this because I feel like it gives it a better, more complex flavor and just adds a little bit more interest to it. And then I do like to use a kitchen scale, even though I call myself the queen of eyeballing. There are moments when I really don't want to eyeball anything. And I always like to start with some warm water. It's just warm to the touch. I warmed it up in the kettle and I um, felt it with my hands and it was just warm enough that I could touch it without burning myself. You don't want to cook any of the microbes in the sourdough and then I had created my sourdough starter which is super happy and active right here and I'm adding that to my warm water and the full recipe is down below. I have an older video in which I'm showing you a sourdough bread with yeast and another ingredient and you can absolutely use the same recipe and just leave out the yeast, leave out the malted barley flour and make it just like you're seeing here and it's just going to be as delicious and a step up. So then I'll put that in my Kitchen KitchenAid stand mixer and kind of mix up the water and the sourdough starter. So while this is happening I'm adding my whole grain flour. I've ground that really fine because I um, think it does actually better if it's not a coarse grind but a fine grind and I love how my mock milk always comes to the rescue there and does the job really well. And recently I found an old world bread flour and I thought, oh, this looks really cool. So I'm going to use that. And I don't know how much I have in that bag until I weigh it out. Could have done that before this video, but I didn't. So here we go. And it looks like I have enough. I don't need to add any other but I've done it with all-purpose flour I mean bread flour all-purpose flour you can use whatever you want it's really very forgiving and I add my salt weigh that out because different types of salt have very different volumes and you'll be surprised at how much variance you get if you weigh it out and then look at the volumes of the different salts so this is different from a lot of recipes because I'm adding the salt right away instead of waiting and doing what people call autolyze. Just adding that to my sourdough water mixture. And I know this is often called a no need bread. I'm letting my kitchen aid do the job here and I just want to incorporate the flours and the wet ingredients the water and the sourdough starter and i do i actually am kneading it a little bit and you could do this by hand however this is a very sticky dough on purpose so i always recommend that you get a kitchen aid they're often on sale and you can get them at garage sales and they will last you a lifetime and i'm just an absolute kitchen aid stand mixer fan as you can tell right here so i'm just going to mix that until the whole dough is just one consistency and there's no more dry flour left. Sometimes I like to use a bowl scraper to scrape the dried flour off from the sides and then continue mixing it. And all I really need to do here in this evening is transfer the 
this is the dough here and then all I do is I transfer to a smaller bowl for just a very simple practical reason is that um, our refrigerator is often so full that I can't fit that big what is it eight quart it's a bigger it's a really big size um, bowl into my refrigerator and so I just transfer it to a smaller bowl and as you can see it is a very sticky dough I'll scrape the rest out of the bowl here to keep it from drying out I put a beeswax wrap on top and then set this in the refrigerator overnight now, some of you know that I have a horse and I like to go horseback riding in the morning and then I had to run a few errands. So what time is it right now? It is actually three o'clock and this bread dough has been sitting in the refrigerator until just now. And I found it doesn't really matter if you let it sit in there for 12 hours or for 16 hours or for eight hours, just like overnight and you bake it first thing in the morning. I didn't have time to do this. And I also really wanted to show you what I'm doing now that the dough has risen a little bit and fermented in the refrigerator overnight and then some and how I actually get it into my oven from here. And here is my bread dough. We're going to look at it in a moment. It's always really interesting doing this on video because there are some moments where you can't really control what's going on and um, it's going to be a surprise to me as much as it is to you and I'm always always hoping that things are turning out the way I want them to. Now before I get into shaping the loaf I will turn on my oven to 475. Here's my cast iron Dutch oven with lid and I'll put that in the oven to preheat. This is really important. You can also bake this bread in a cold Dutch oven, but then you would have to have it on parchment paper. And I actually like to just flip it in there. And when it's hot, it's gonna bake right away on the bottom and it won't stick. And as you can see earlier, I like to have this cookie tray underneath my Dutch oven because so many of you ask me, well, my bread came out really nice, but it's very dark and burnt and has a very thick crust on the bottom. And that is when your oven emits more heat on the bottom than on the top and it's kind of uneven. And then I shield the loaf of bread, if you will, from the heat by adding another layer underneath it. So there's a bit of, um, of, an, uh, of an air gap between so it doesn't get baked so much on the bottom. So put this in here. for probably a good half hour because we want this thoroughly heated. Okay, I added another layer here to protect it from drying out. This is a linen bowl cover that I made and then my linen beeswax wrap. And this is what the dough looks like. It has visibly risen, but not as much as I had left it out um, at room temperature. And as you can see, it is very sticky. It sticks to the sides of the bowl. So let's go ahead and shape it. I like to put a lot of flour on my work surface. And on my hands because that keeps the dough from sticking to my hands. And the first thing is I just loosen the dough up from the sides of the bowl to make it a little bit easier to get it out. This will be one big loaf of bread. You can also, and if you want to practice, make this into two loaves and then you would just cut the loaf, the dough into half. Now we need to get it out on the counter. Yeah, you can see all the air bubbles in here. That's exactly what I was hoping it would do. And like I said, I have baked dozens and dozens of breads and every single time, especially when I'm on camera, I'm, um, I'm hoping that it will be okay. So it's got a little bit over my flour here, so I'm just gonna reel it back in a little bit. 
And now I will do a little bit of stretching and folding. And it's a very simple process. Well, oh, on my hands. I lift the dough and I fold it over. And then I do the same on this side. I lift the dough and I fold it over and then I'll do that one more time here. And one more time here. I know this isn't a lot of stretch and folds, but I find that for my purposes and for my bread, it's just perfect. If you can, if your dough is open to that, <laughs> you can do a few more of those where you just lift it and stretch it. Now it's starting to want to come together and stick together. So I don't know how many more I can do. There are recipes that tell you to do them at certain intervals and so many over a certain period of time. You can always do that later. I'm just telling you this is another way to do this. Now I have this side here and what I like to do is flip the bread. I don't need all this flour. I went a little bit overboard here. And now what I'm doing is, and this is probably the most complicated part of this whole video. I'm taking my loaf and see how I'm, how I'm moving this and then I'm using it to pull it towards me. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to create some tension on the outside of the loaf and then I'll do that a few times. Like I, I move the dough underneath and pull it towards me. And as you can see, all of a sudden that dough isn't sticky anymore. Obviously I do have a little bit of flour on my hand still. It's okay if it's a little bit sticky. And then just keep on doing this. The dough is very cold. And I'm add a little bit more flour in my hands. And that's fine. It actually bakes better when it's not room temperature, but when it's cold. And you can do this just a little bit or, you know, a few more times. So here I have a lot of tension and just make sure you're kind of um, creating this tension on the outside, you don't want to knead it at this point. You don't want to press it down. You don't want to maneuver it or manipulate it. You just want to create that tension on the outside and pull it in as you're pulling it towards you. Now we need another 20 minutes at least for my Dutch oven to heat up thoroughly. I have had a bread fail where I didn't do that and I was rushed because my kitchen was hot and I thought, you know what, I can just shortcut the whole process and I learned my lesson because my bread actually stuck to the bottom of my Dutch oven and I had to semi-destroy it to actually get it out. So I won't do that again. However, what I will do now is I will put this in a proofing basket. You can also use a shallow bowl and line it with a kitchen towel and sprinkle with some flour. I have a proofing basket that I will get out of my cabinet here. Sometimes I use it to dry my um, stale bread in here. And then I have this mixture here of, uh, this is actually, this is rice flour. So I want to add some rice flour and some flour to the bottom here so it doesn't stick. You can also leave out this liner and then you get this nice um, pattern here for your bread. It's up to you which way you do it. It's always good to go a little bit heavier on the flour than not having enough. And we'll put this in here. So this is okay if you would like to do this and kind of make it stick together a little bit here on the bottom. 
And since I have another 20 minutes before my Dutch oven is really preheated, I will return this to the refrigerator and then come right back. So the dough is in the refrigerator. And if you're thinking now, okay, so that's all well and good, but she already has her sourdough starter and she has some experience and um, she makes everything look so simple. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying to make this so simple that everybody, even somebody who has never baked a loaf of bread, feels like this is doable and I can do this. And if you want to get everything that I know, all my secrets and all my little tips and all my super easy sourdough method, I encourage you to check out my online sourdough course that I've created just for people like you who are overwhelmed by all the feedings and the discards and the measurings because I don't do any of that and I still bake beautiful loaves of bread the link for the sourdough online course is in the description box below this video. You can check it out. There is a private Facebook group in which you can ask me all your questions. You can also upload photos if you have questions where you get a lot of support, not just from me, but from other members. And it's really the, the tool to get started with sourdough. It has how to make a sourdough starter, how to maintain your sourdough starter, how to keep it long-term, various questions that people have and problems that can come up and all the recipes. So check it out and I will see you in about 18 minutes to put the loaf of bread in the oven. Here's my little cleanup hack. If you have worked with sourdough bread and dough before, you know that it can be really sticky. And all I do is I use a metal bench scraper and scrape my work surface and just wipe it and I'm done. When the Dutch oven is really hot, I carefully remove it from the oven. And again, you gotta be really careful because I have burned myself plenty of times. I flip the bread right into the Dutch oven. Sometimes I like to shake it just a little bit so it sits right in the middle. And either with a sharp knife or a dedicated bread lame, I like to cut just a little bit. That helps the bread rise a little bit more. You want to be Ideally, just a little bit faster than I am, but I like to make that cut look really nice. Lid back onto the Dutch oven, and I will put it in the oven. I set my timer for 25 minutes with lid. After 25 minutes, I remove it from the oven. Again, be careful, this is so hot. And let's see what it looks like. It's always a surprise. Ooh, there it is. Nice. I'm happy. <laughs> and I'll put it back in the oven for another 30 to 35 minutes, depending on your oven and temperature, or until the crust is nice golden brown. So let's check it out. Let's see what it's doing. And here it is, nice golden brown. And we just need a spatula to, it doesn't stick on the bottom, but we need to transfer it to a wire rack and let it cool, which is a hard part. And this is your loaf of bread. It's so easy, so simple. As you could see, there's nothing really that you need to do. Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen and I'll see you in that video.